Welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Weather. This is a special episode because we are saying goodbye to 2025 and hello to 2026. So yeah, it's I'm trying I try to make these episodes special, especially when it's New Year's. And I have a couple of resolutions with the with the new year. The first is to play the intro. Okay, now that's over with. The second, I, I've read some criticisms and I'm, my penmanship will get better this year. But it's still 2025 as I'm recording this, so my penmanship can be uh, however it wants to be. Now, I want to recap 2025 in the Scranton area. The average, when averaging the high and the low over 365 days, it was 50.5 degrees, meaning half the time it was below that and half the time it was above that. And that is actually exactly climatologically average for the Scranton area. But something also that's interesting is this was the coldest year since 2014. So the last 10 years before this year were above average when averaging the high and the low. So that is an impressive stretch that we broke and finally had a, an average year instead of an above average year. Now I want to recap the highest temperatures and the lowest temperatures so far this year, and it's over by the time you're seeing this. So the coldest temperature happened on January 22nd, so fairly early in the year. Actually, during our coldest time of year, we saw our coldest temperature, and it was negative nine degrees. That set a record, and our warmest temperature, that happened actually twice, back-to-back -back days on June 23rd, and it'll ampersand, and 24th, it was 95 degrees. Now we can go back and see what the average coldest and warmest temperatures are in a given year. The average coldest is negative two, and then the average warmest is 94. So a little bit warmer than we usually are and a little bit colder than we usually were. So it was a bit of a, a, bit of a, a chaotic year. The most snow that we got in a single day was 4.2 inches, and that was earlier this month. I meant, um, did I say, I meant the day. So December 2nd, that was the, the snowiest day and then the rainiest day happened in late September. And that was, it was 2.6, I think five inches. So yeah, it was a quite a rainy day there and a quite a snowy day. <laughs> so yeah, and I, I've, I've neglected to do this so far. I wanna update the snow ruler because if you don't know, we have this big ruler that goes all the way up the board up to 32 inches and normal snowfall for an entire season is 40. So uh, right now, as of, the turn of the new year, we are officially sitting at 15.7 inches. So we'll mark that here and we'll mark it as the 31st. Now I've been updating it every week. I think what I need to do is maybe erase this and go back to like every snow event. But then if we get like 0.2, it may muddy it up. But here we go. The turn of the year, 15.7 inches of snow so far. And you may have been thinking, oh, from last week, it only moved up, what, an inch? We were, weren't we supposed to get six inches? Remember that event? Yep, <laughs> let's talk about it. We like to stay accountable here, or at least me. I like to stay accountable here, and I wanna show you exactly what went wrong the last event and what's going to be going on here in the future. So let's talk about the, uh, the last event. So I wanna break off until this side of the board like I neatly wanted to do. So I wanna show you what we look at as far as as models so there's something called a skew t a skewed temperatures it's basically a vertical look at the atmosphere that's just the name of it skew t because it's diagonal but basically we look at the vertical look at the atmosphere to tell how the type of what the type of snow is going to be so this was last week the profile we're gonna skew the temperatures about 45 degrees. That's how skew T works, just so it kind of looks normal on a graph. But if we take a look at temperature and we take a look at dew point, both in the red and the green, that's not just for Christmas, that's for temperature and dew point, and it kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna make sure these markers don't fall. All right, so the temperature line went something like this. So at the surface, it was cold enough for snow. Anything left of this line is below freezing. So. This is below freezing, this is below freezing, this is below freezing, this is above freezing. So we look how close this line gets to here. So if the surface 
cold enough for snow. But as you go up, it actually, we actually had a warm nose that briefly got above freezing. And then the rest of the profile was below, below freezing. So we're taking a look at this profile and basically the snow starts forming all the way up here. We'll put it, let's say here, this is the, the clouds when the snow is forming and then it goes down, it briefly gets above freezing it starts melting or encountering super cool droplets. It, it basically becomes less compact and then it refreezes completely before it hits the ground. And this is the formation of what we call sleet. This is what happens when sleet forms. So uh, in this scenario, different models, some models are showing this. It was the whole profile was gonna stay below freezing. It was gonna be more of a wet compact snow. And some models were kind of hinting here, but none of the models were showing it completely melting. It's hard for some of these models to resolve these types of things because we don't have actually what's going on in the atmosphere. Everything that we see is estimated. We send off weather balloons. The closest weather balloon that's sent off towards our area is in Pittsburgh, but we didn't know that part of the atmosphere was above freezing to melt the snow, to hit the ground. And overall, with the, the amount of sleet that we end up getting, it was equivalent to the five inches of snow, the four to five inches of snow that we were predicting. It's just the fact that it melted and it was a really wet, dense, compact snow. Let's compare this next event to what we're going to see now. Now you may be saying, oh, I can't trust WNEP anymore. I can't, I just can't. Well, here's, here's the skew T once again. We'll skew the temperature like this. But this time, the temperature like here is below freezing but the rest of the profile goes like this. So at no point, at no point is any of the profile above freezing. So we pretty much know it's going to be snow. The key thing is how heavy is it gonna snow? Where is the heaviest bands gonna set up? That sort of thing. But we know, hey, it's gonna snow. There's gonna be enough energy for snow and it's gonna be a nice fluffy snow, which I don't know how much snow we got on. <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I'm recording this again. Wednesday night, but we'll see how much snow we end up getting. We're saying, I think we're gonna get around one to two inches, could be maybe a little bit more than that. So that's what the profile looks like. Instead of getting above freezing, it's below freezing. Again, we're expecting one to two inches with these quick little uh, clipper systems that are pushing in. It's not gonna be a long duration event or else that would be higher. But now I have a map here and I wanna show you uh, currently what's going on. So I wanna give a, a, a lake temperature update for the Great Lakes. A uh, Lake Erie is now sitting at about 38 degrees. And that's important because once Lake Erie freezes over, it pretty much cuts off all the lake effect snow events for our area. Lake Ontario usually doesn't freeze over, but Lake Erie, that's the important driver of snow for most of us. So it's 38 degrees and continues to lower. About a month ago, it was around 48 degrees. So that, that's a, the temperature update from the, uh, from the Great Lakes. This next system is continuing to scoop up the moisture and, and dump it in. And what's going on is the jet stream and the overall flow will continue to be out of the north and west. And we're not gonna see enough um, weather systems develop into strong low pressures that I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even Monday, we're gonna continue to see just a flow over the lakes and some lake effect snowflakes that I'll draw. I'm not the best drawer of snowflakes, I'll just draw a star. But some lake effect snowflakes, I don't think they're going to be uh, too much accumulating events. I think all in all, the highest we'll see like a half an inch to an inch from, from the, these as these flurries start <coughs> forming over the Great Lakes and start dumping them all up on us. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. I could get into more of lake effect snow and all that boring stuff, but I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you with the, the time being. We're going to continue to see a northwest flow again for about the next week or so, and that's gonna to continue to provide a chance for some flurries, but I'm not expecting any huge snow events after Thursday morning. So that's your edition here of whiteboard weather. I think we did a good job. That's the end of the year. I'll see you next year. My name is Anthony Bordenaro here in Storm Tracker 16 Weather Center. Have a great rest of your day and year.